First question is from B-Boy Warrior. How do elite gymnasts get so strong and perform so well despite such a high training frequency with not a lot of rest? Oh, good, good question. B-boy. Love this question. So, so here's why, okay? Gymnasts do not go a- out and practice their, their moves on the rings and on the horse and all that stuff as a workout. They are practicing. They're mm-hmm. constantly practicing. This is what we talk about on the podcast. This is a very valuable thing to understand with your training. Gymnasts get phenomenal results in physically, even though they're not necessarily training for that. Remember, gymnasts aren't necessarily training to build and sculpt their bodies. They're trying to get better at all of the positions and moves that they do and their stability. And so they don't go out there thinking to themselves, I'm going to hammer my biceps, I'm going to hammer my shoulders, I'm going to hammer my legs. They go out there and think, I'm going to practice and perfect a skill. And when you're practicing a skill, you don't practice a skill to fatigue where you can't do it anymore because then you're not able to practice it, right? Not mm-hmm. to mention that proprioception is the foundation to all pursuits. So body awareness, right? Body mm-hmm. awareness, is, and I, I don't think there is a sport that focuses on that more than gymnasts. Yeah, that's your base. I mean, we remember the – Maybe divers or – Not even. Think, yeah. no, gymna- gymnasts still serve – because everything a diver does for body control, a gymnast yeah. does and some. So – their their body control and awareness of their body in space is uh, beyond almost every other athlete by a ton. In fact, when we did that that interview with Chad Wesley, uh, you know, we we talked about you know if you were to pick a sport that would you know lay the foundation for the super athlete, yeah, it would be gymnastics. Was well, that me. totally resonated with me. That's why kids are doing parkour. That's why they're doing things like that, where it's like exploring all these different ways to uh, move the body and, and become aware of, uh, you know, the position that they're in and how to then kind of work their way out of it. Gymnasts are masters at this. And and to be fair, like gymnasts, like this is really taxing on the body. Like yes. they're really, they're, they're not old. You don't see a lot of old gymnasts because, you know, it, it is very demanding. Like this frequency, this style of training is, is really hard on the body, but uh, you know, like they, they'll, they'll, they'll do max effort, but they do rest quite a bit and they're just trying to make sure that they're, they're constantly practicing the skill and sharpening the skill of it so i don't know if i told you guys or not but i i plan to enroll it's i think it's called like tumbling or something early on for, yeah. and i forget how old max needs to be when when i enroll him that yeah 100 yeah, i will do that and hope that it's something he enjoys and likes doing and it's funny because i think you know my generation and definitely the generation before that would be like totally frowned upon as a, as you know enrolling your son in gymnastics oh, mm. would be you know that would be totally demasculinizing him to put him in something like that or it's Dude, so- one of the best investments I've ever made in my life and I will recommend this to anybody who has boys is get uh get a trampoline get a huge trampoline that's like you know uncovered encased they have they have their skills and their body awareness like went up a thousand percent after that and they're just they just live on that thing it's one thing they can always go to jump flip and they, they just experiment they figure their body out yeah. and they move yeah. yeah gymnasts are were one of the um uh, the things that motivated me or inspired me to to come up with the trigger session concept for maps anabolic because i had gymnasts that worked for me as trainers and i remember just being blown away by their muscular development of their arms in particular now with I, would, I used to think to myself like you know they're not trained to failure and they're not letting their biceps rest a full week before they hit him again like how is this even possible so i started thinking about this over and over again and really it's the frequent practice it's the frequent stimulation so it would be the diff- it would be like if you went to the gym and you practiced squatting benching overhead pressing and rowing you know four or five days a week not Going out there to hammer yourself. Yeah, in fact, not or, or trying not to be sore. That's right. Yeah. Your goal is to go out there and just practice these movements and get really, really good at them so that someone could look at you and say, wow, that's the best looking squat I've ever seen. If you did that with that level of frequency, the side effect of that would be lots of muscular development. You built really, really strong uh, muscles and you would build quite a bit of muscle doing that. Now, just doing that, I don't think is the formula for maximal muscle gain. But it is a great formula for muscle gain, which is why you see gymnasts looking the way they do. But there's one more piece of that, okay? I don't. I also think it's not fair to look at a high-level athlete and look at their muscular development and say, okay, if I train like them, I'm going to look like them. Because there's a bit of a, of a selection bias when you're looking at that high level of an athlete. Mm-hmm. When you're looking at you know, top state-level 
you know, you know, maybe you know, nation wide champion or or worldwide champion gymnast. You're looking at people who train a lot for years and years and years, totally dedicated. Will also have extremely amazing genetics for that given sport. So same reason why. Look, if you swam and you swam like crazy and you train like an Olympic swimmer, you'll d- never be Michael Phelps. Yeah, you're not going to get short legs and a long torso right. and long arms for it. Now, Michael Phelps was born with the genes to have short legs, long torso, flat rib cage, and long arms, which happens to make you uh, give you an advantage in swimming. So you're not going to necessarily look like a gymnast by training them. The best way to build muscle is to understand this un- this, some of these concepts and inject it in your training. And if you follow like a MAPS program, you'll see and you'll notice, although it's much more common nowadays, but especially when we first came out uh, five years ago, it wasn't common to see a resistance training routine that had you training your whole body three days a week. It just wasn't. We were the ones that really come out and say, hey, this is actually what works better. Now you're starting to see more and more people doing it. And it came from watching people and athletes like gymnasts. 